What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the Game Week 21 deadline. Just before we jump into it, I did want to talk about a couple of quick things. So number one, I've decided to start an email newsletter. I did put this out on the community tab on YouTube the other day. Someone replied, is it still 2004? I can definitely confirm it's 2023, but people are still using email. So the idea is it lets me produce another bit of content, but this time in written form instead of on video uh, so kind of bite-sized fpl content hopefully once per game week close to the deadline and for those that need a quick overview if you are someone that watches every single video and is always keeping up to date it might not be quite as useful but if you do want to check it out either way there is a link in the description below you can just put your email in and when i send out the first one uh, you can see what it's like and if you don't want to you know, get that newsletter every single week. You can just unsubscribe. It's as easy as that. It'd be cool to get a thousand people signed up before I even send out the first one. So the link is in the description below. The second thing is I want to start creating some more short form content, not necessarily just fantasy Premier League, but I am going to need some help with editing those videos. Uh, there's no real writing or finding content involved. So I will write it. I will film it. It'll just need to be trimmed down, which will be super easy for anyone that knows what they're doing. It's more so adding the effect the transitions the images and stuff like that so there is a google form which is also in the description uh, below and within that there's some footage that i recorded which you can download and the idea is i'd like to see you edit it and then i can try and pick someone from there there's a few other things to fill out it's all pretty straightforward like i said for anyone that kind of knows what they're doing so email newsletter short form editor links in the description below check them out if it's something that might interest you so just as I finished uploading the final thoughts video to YouTube, I saw the announcement that Double Game Week 22 had been confirmed. So I've taken that video down. I'm going to go through my initial thoughts and reactions right now. The rest of the video, I just don't have time to re-record. So I'm just going to have to leave it as it is. Just bear in mind that was recorded before this announcement. I don't think it's going to make too much difference to the content. But if you hear me say things about Man United players, if they get a double, you now know that it's been confirmed. So Man United will play Crystal Palace at high and Leeds at home. Leeds will play Nottingham Forest away and Man United away. That is subject to neither side, so Man United or Leeds, getting an FA Cup fourth round replay. Now, the FA Cup games will be played between game weeks 21 and game week 22. So by the time we get to game week 22, we will know for sure whether it's a double game week, okay? If you bring in a player from Man United or Leeds this week, and then one of the two sides gets a replay in the FA Cup, this will no longer be a double. It's similar to the Man City and Spurs situation that happened earlier on in the season. I don't think there's too much panic about bringing in players from either of these teams necessarily this week anyway. Anyway, we'll start with Man United. They obviously have Arsenal away, so it's not the greatest fixture to bring a player in for. If you had to make a transfer this week and you wanted to get a Man United player, then fair enough. But I wouldn't go out of your way to do it. Like Rashford still looks like the best option. And for what it's worth, I think if people didn't use their triple captain chip on Haaland last week or anyone else, I don't think a lot of people are now going to save it for Haaland in 23. I think they're going to use it on Rashford for Crystal Palace at home and Leeds at home. It does look pretty good. So Rashford's still a great option. Then Luke Shaw. And it's all about getting another player in. So Martial, for example, um, there was no press conference from Ten Hag. It was actually recorded on Wednesday. So there's no updates about Martial. I have seen some rumours saying that he wasn't in training on Thursday. I don't know if that's true. But you're not going to bring him in now. You're going to wait to see if he's fit ahead of game week 22. Similarly for Fernandez good option for game week 22 because he's absolutely nailed on but if you haven't got the money to go straight to him this week there's no use taking a hit for Arsenal away so Man United players can probably wait with Leeds it's a little bit different because they're they're cheaper there's not necessarily a huge amount of Leeds players you'd want to go for anyway Meli, Meli, uh, maybe Melier if you want to go for a goalkeeper who's only 4.5 million obviously Rodrigo has been playing well at 6.4 and some people especially with Greenwood or looking to replace a forward, might want to go for Nyonto. He's not 100% nailed, but right now it's going to be hard for him not to be in the first 11. And they've got Brentford at home this week, so that is a good fixture. So you could bring in Leeds players this week, and if they don't get the double, they've still got Nottingham Forest away, which isn't bad. Then it's Man United, Everton, Southampton. So I don't mind 
bringing in Leeds players if you need to make a transfer. I, I, I'm going to. I've already run through uh, my own team in the video later. I'm still not going to make a transfer this week. But ultimately, I think it looks pretty good for Man United. Bearing in mind they might blank in game week 25. So if you do go all out to bring the players in, you are then going to have to deal with them ahead of game week 25 as well. So any like I don't know if you bring in Fernandez, you might have to get rid of him again. So that's two transfers to do that. You've got a way up if that's worth it, especially when you're going to probably captain Rashford anyway. Although Fernandez is now a big differential captain. And then for Leeds, they're cheap enough that if you needed to bring him in this week, you could. But ultimately, for most people, it's still going to be worth rolling your transfer because you're going to have a lot more information ahead of game week 22. So that's what's been announced today. As long as neither Man United or Leeds United have an FA Cup replay, uh, then that will be a double game week in game week 22. So there's another forward that we need to talk about, Darwin Nunez. And unfortunately, we didn't get a huge amount of information about him in the press conferences either. So Klopp was asked if Darwin Nunez was closer to being available for selection in game week 21. Bearing in mind that in game week 20, he wasn't even in the squad. And Klopp simply replied, yes. Which is obviously good news. That's better than saying no. But it doesn't tell us whether he's close to being just back in the squad and on the bench or back in the squad and potentially even pushing for a start. I think if you don't own him, there's there's pretty much no reason to buy him this week you've got no guarantee whatsoever uh, that he will start and he's not that cheap at nearly nine million if you've got him if you already own him presumably you didn't sell last week because you either had other stuff to do or you thought he was a good long-term option which is fair enough because i think he is still a quality player that has scored quite a few goals this season despite what people say uh, and that fixture run is not the worst in the world i think in that case you'd probably just hold on to him whether or not you start him Depends on what your bench is. But I think in most cases, unless we got further information, he was definitely bench. I would probably just start him against Chelsea and hope for the best. So if we get any more information about him, obviously I'll talk about it on the deadline stream tomorrow. I usually tweet about this stuff as well. Obviously all the links for that are in the description below. But ultimately, it's good news. It just doesn't tell us whether he's going to start or not. So if you don't have him, I don't see why you'd buy him. And if you've got him, unless we hear any more, I'd probably start him this week. So I know I talked about Man City attackers yesterday, but obviously we've now seen the lineup against Spurs, how that result went, the minutes that certain players got off the bench, and of course those players that didn't get any minutes at all. And maybe even more importantly, the uh, post-match interview from Pep Guardiola, which was really interesting. So I've put together this buy, potentially buy, hold and sell list, and I'll come on to that in a minute. I can't go into great detail about the interview because it was, I think it was like three or four minutes long. Um, but essentially... Pep just didn't seem that happy with the performance, even though they came back to 4-2. And he was back once again questioning the desire of certain players in his squad. And he did that a few weeks ago. If you remember, I think it was around Rico Lewis. And I mentioned it and I said I didn't know whether he was just really bigging up Rico Lewis because he is good. Which, to be fair, he was brilliant last night. Or whether or not he was trying to make other players in his position start playing better, start doing better in training, like Kyle Walker, like Cancelo, for example, because Ake once again started left back ahead of Cancelo, and Cancelo is someone that earlier on in the season we would have said is worth that premium because he's absolutely nailed. So it wasn't great that certain players we've come to expect to start were on the bench, and after the game, Pep is questioning, you know, like I said, their desire and their hunger to go and win another title. So this is kind of what I would consider the state of Man City players from an FPL point of view right now. So I think with Bayer, you can still, obviously, I, most people have got Haaland, but I put him on the list anyway because I didn't want to forget him. And Edison is nailed. Even though he made that mistake last night, he's still completely nailed. I appreciate that most of you are not going to want to buy him, but I stuck him on the list anyway because from a FPL point of view, he's one of the only nailed players. And of course, as we saw last night, should have had an assist, right? And I know people are going to say the defender touched it. It doesn't matter. From an FPL point of view, that is an intended target assist and should have been given and that is the last time i'll mention it on a video until probably tomorrow in the deadline stream um on potentially buy i wasn't sure whether to put these in buy or hold which is why they're kind of in the middle now with kevin de bruyne potentially he's one of those players that pep guardiola is talking about because he's been at the club for so long and i'm not saying like he's bored or anything like that but you just don't know, you know, did he actually miss that day in training because of personal reasons or was it something more than that as he had a fallen out with Pep? For what it's worth, I think De Bruyne is probably absolutely fine and he is one of the players that Pep has relied upon numerous times over his time at Man City. So I think if you wanted to buy him, you potentially could, but I don't know if there's a rush to do it before Wolves at home. That is kind of the beauty now with Man City in that if you've not got certain players, well, you've already missed the double game week and yes, they've got, um, let me just tell chat wolves at home 
uh, and then Spurs away, which isn't even that great. But it's not until game week 23 they've got the next double. So you can give yourself a couple of weeks to kind of reassess if you want to. So if you've got De Bruyne, you definitely hold. I suspect he'll start the next game. Um, but I don't know if I'll go out of my way to buy him this week. With Stones and Mares. Stones, I think it's very interesting that as soon as he was back fit, he was in the squad. Laporte didn't start again. And rather than Ake starting left centre back, it was a Kanji and Stones in the middle. Uh, and Ake played left back. So I think that looks really good because before that um, injury where he picked it up and, were, you know, we were looking at bringing him in, then he got the injury. He did seem to be pretty much their first choice defender in general whether he's going to play right back or play center back so i think stones if you need a defender this week from man city is probably the best option to buy and obviously maris has done himself you know he's done himself all kinds of favors by doing really well last night and he started both games in the double so again as always with players from man city lots of people are going to now consider bringing him in for walls and there is every chance that he doesn't play because the turnaround's pretty quick and pep does have a great squad at his disposal but as we said before the double if you are going to buy an attacker that's not de bruyne or harlan then it probably has to be maris right now because you just can't guarantee the minutes of any of them and he looks like the best at getting those minutes as it stands that could be completely different from game week 23 I, like i said i don't think there's any rush to buy man city players right now until that double this week's fixture is pretty good but next week's is not as good right but mares is a decent price if you want to go for him go for him i think if you've got ake or a kanji you can hold on to them i don't know if i would buy them i fully get that a kanji has played every single game since he's been available for man city which means his minutes look really good but there are plenty of times over that run where there has been a lot of injuries whereas right now Ake's fit Laporte's fit uh, Diaz is back as well I don't know how close he is to starting but he's back you've got Kanji as well and you've got Stones that can all play centre back and obviously in the right back spot where Kanji can play so can Stones so can Walker so can Cancelo and so can Rico Lewis so I think if you've got a Kanji you can hold him but I'm not sure I would buy him and similar situation with Ake what I would say from watching that game last night I thought two of the best players were defenders and that is Rico Lewis who just looks so comfortable at 18 playing that kind of inverted midfielder role or from right back to midfield and Ake made so many good tackles as well where I didn't necessarily think it was his fault that he had to make those tackles in the first place but he just didn't put a foot wrong and he's been so good for Pep recently that I think he will continue starting I'm just not sure I'm that certain that I would buy him but if you've got him you can hold and maybe the same with Grealish because it could be Grealish left and Mar is right the majority of times I don't think I would sell him before Wolves at home but there's no guarantee that he starts moving forward so I wouldn't buy him either and I think unfortunately at this point Foden and Cancelo are just sells because you're going to get into the trap now and I've been here loads of times before where okay well the turnaround between Thursday and Sunday is pretty quick they might start a hold on to them okay they only got 50 minutes or whatever next game they might play again and then it's a double so I might keep hold of them the reality is that Foden is just not getting enough starts if you go and look at the last seven eight games he's hardly started any of them he's it's not that he's even that expensive it's just that there's so many other good midfield options you are missing out by having him in your squad instead and with Cancelo okay he started against Man United then didn't play against Spurs he may or may not play against Wolves but he's oh he's seven million seven odd million and going forward you just can't rely on him there's no point in having him in your team so I think sooner rather than later you've got to sell them obviously every team is slightly different right you might have other issues to deal with and you might just try and um, risk it because it's walls at home that's absolutely fine but i'm talking in the long or sorry in the medium term like the next you know this game into the next kind of two or three you've probably not got to look to sell them unless there's injuries to like mares or greedish etc i just don't know how many minutes foden's going to get and the same for cancelo so there's no double till 23 i've said that a few times now there's no rush to buy these players and you could take the risk against wolves but uh that sometimes they're just not worth the headache i think harlan edison pretty much nailed on i still think de bruyne is right up there maris and stones look good right now outside of that i'm just not 100 sure to be honest okay so let's talk about cheaper defenders so i assume that most people have trippier Shaw, and an arsenal defender which other defenders under five million are worth looking at so i'm going to do five million and under one of the issues is most of the the good good ones are from those teams you mentioned or would mean a double up so you've got ben white if you've got gabriel or saliba you could double up with ben white he's under five million and a good option but i would argue that it's better to double up on the attack instead it's a similar situation with luke shaw you could go for someone like varan who looks pretty much nailed on
one doesn't necessarily offer a huge amount of goal threat but at least you get those clean, uh, clean sheets but again a lot of people have got Rashford and I think if you were looking to target Man United because of a potential double in 22 you are better off trying to get someone like Fernandes in instead if you can so Varane's not necessarily ideal I would say with Man United it's probably less there's, there's less to worry about doubling up on the attack than there is with Arsenal. So you could potentially go double defence if you wanted to. And then you've got Botman who could go with Trippier. And obviously they've kept a lot of clean sheets so far this season. But they might blank in game week 25. So that could be an issue. One thing to say, if you're looking five and under, they are at a price where you could bench them. So the best thing to do in that situation is look through your, your squad on a, on a FPL planner like FPL.team. And then look at the weeks where you might need a backup defender. And then go and pick a player from a team that has good fixtures that's, that week that's one way to kind of do it but that's worth noting about Botman they could could blank in game week 25 SGP Nian from Brighton is someone that I really like but this week they play Leicester away now Brighton are of course the better team right now but going away to Leicester is not necessarily a great chance at a clean sheet and they could also blank in game week 25 so for me you're better off waiting until game week 22 to make that decision Ake is 5 million so he just about fits the bill of a cheap defender and I do do own him and I am hopeful that he will continue to start because against Man United he was centre back instead of Laporte and in uh, sorry against Spurs he was left back instead of Cancelo or anyone else that could play there so that is a good sign but am I confident that he will play against Wolves not really I guess I'm more confident that he'll start than he won't but again I'm, I can't be 100% sure I've already spoken a lot about Man City players and then the other player I've put on this graphic is Canate for Liverpool but obviously once Van Dijk is back there's only two centre-back slots and you've got Canate, Matip uh, and Van Dijk so long-term option he's not necessarily great I know people aren't you know all up on buying Liverpool players right now but one under five million is worth looking at but longer term it's just not necessarily an option so there's kind of there's kind of a lot of issues with trying to buy defenders. My my general advice would be try and get through this week if you can, even if that means playing your Arsenal and Man United defender, and then just reassess ahead of game week 22. Because as we've mentioned a lot this week, uh, the Brighton fixtures are pretty good, especially for an attacker this week. But from a defensive point of view, there's no harm in waiting to see whether there's a chance they'll get a blank in 25, and then to bring them in for Bournemouth at home, Palace away, Fulham at home, Newcastle away, West Ham at home, which are pretty good fixtures. And if that fixture against Newcastle doesn't go ahead another fixture might go in there instead but I just wouldn't take the risk of doing it this week and then you're just looking at other teams like Brentford for example a lot of people were looking at Ben Mee recently well okay Leeds away is not necessarily great for a clean sheet Southampton at home is okay but then you run into Arsenal Palace Man United and Arsenal Man United have got a good chance of scoring in both of those games and from what I kind of looked earlier there's not a huge amount of te uh, other teams that have got really good defensive fixtures so I just I think it's a really tough position to fill right now. I spoke about Trent Alexander-Arnold on the game week preview. If you've got the money, you could go for him, but obviously he doesn't come under um, a cheap defender. I would try and get through this week and then reassess next week. But right now, unless you're someone that wants to keep Cancelo or buy Trent or Robertson, then most of your money is probably going to be more focus and attack because I just I just don't personally see a huge amount of cheap options unless you're happy to double up on any of those teams I mentioned let me know below who are you looking at from a cheap defensive point of view okay so this is an interesting question should we ignore price and just go for players based on stats and fixtures there's lots of cheap options outscoring more expensive ones now this is the kind of question where it could have its own video obviously we don't have time for that today so I'll try and keep it a bit shorter but ultimately the answer is yes you should try and ignore price and just go for the best option based on merit whether you do eye test stats and then obviously look at the fixtures as well that's completely up to you it's not necessarily that easy because when we see a player that's more expensive we tend to think they're just a better option than, than someone that's cheaper and quite often that will be the case and usually they're more expensive because in the past they have performed like that but that won't always continue now when you make your squad of course you want players in there that we consider good value right so you could probably say that someone like Saka right now is better value than a De Bruyne or a Salah and someone like Odegaard you might consider better value than Saka etc so you want good value players you want good players for points per million but you can't have a whole squad like that at some point you are paying for reliability and in the past obviously that's been players like Salah right now it's players like Haaland Harry Kane as well they're not always the best value or the best points per million but they do offer you a level of kind of reliability of point starts etc so that's something to consider what I would say is 
just because a cheap option has outscored a more expensive one doesn't mean they're necessarily a better option because those points are gone. You're trying to predict now what will happen in the future. So as an example, let's say you had 13 million to spend and it was between Almiron and Salah and the money that you save on Almiron doesn't matter because you're really happy with the rest of your squad. Then yeah, you should ignore the price and just see who is the better player. I mean, I know, I know I'm picking Salah as an example, but I'm assuming most people would agree that Salah is a better option than Almiron, in which case it's worth paying the extra money and not just banking it for a rainy day. There's loads of things to consider, like what, what might you need that money for next week? In two game weeks' time, there's a double game week. Do you need that money to spread around? But as an extreme example, Almiron has outscored Salah so far this season, but I wouldn't expect that to continue so I would, it's not really a price thing. It's just I think Salah would then be worth paying that price for. It could be for Kane and, I don't know, Nunez or someone like that. Nunez might look really good right now. And I know he hasn't outscored him, so it's not the greatest example. But you would expect going forward that Kane will be a better option. His minutes are always going to be good. He's on penalties, etc. So this question kind of gets asked every single season. Should we just ignore price? Because there'll always be a cheap player that does really well. And ultimately, the answer is always yes. But there's usually more to that. And a lot of the time, you're paying for kind of reliability. So again, one of the reasons I really like Saka is because for just 8 million which, yes, is more expensive than the other Arsenal midfielders, but is definitely less than other players in the game from different teams. Guaranteed start, minutes are good, penalty taken, one of the best teams in the league. So, yeah, ignore price. It's not always easy, but it's also not always the thing that matters either, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Okay, so what do you think about benching Rashford or Martinelli? How do you see the Arsenal versus Man United game going? So I own both of these players, and there's no way I'll be benching them. I think that the Arsenal defence is extremely good, and they are at home, but I think Man United are more than capable of scoring past them. Not saying they'll go and score two, three, or four goals, but I think they can at least score. And obviously, Rashford was in in great form, so I wouldn't want to bench him. And similarly, the, the Man United defence has got better. I know they'll be without Casemiro, but Arsenal are fully capable of scoring at least one past them at home. So I I wouldn't want to bench either of these players i guess if you're gonna do it then maybe the one that is playing away to one of the best defenses in the in the league so far this season is a good option like rashford but you'd have to have a really good bench option i've seen some people for example considering playing andreas Pereira over one of these two and i just don't think i would do that maybe if he had a better fixture i would and look i'm not saying that spurs are a watertight defense but I'm not sure I'm at the kind of position where I'd play Andreas Pereira over either of Martinelli or Rashford. I guess there is a chance that Andreas Pereira will get penalties if Mitrovic keeps missing them. But even that wouldn't be enough for uh, me to bench either of these two players. So unless you've got like a super good squad where you've really spread the, uh, spread the money around, I would just play them both. I don't think it's going to be... I don't think we're going to see like a 4-2 like we did for Man City and uh, Spurs. I think it'll be a bit more cagey than that. But ultimately, we've seen how well Arsenal can go and score against any team. So I think, I don't know, something like three goals total, 2-1 to either side. I was going to say 2-1 to Arsenal, but I can't do that because I think there is a chance Man United could win. But let's say three goals in total. Uh, and in that case, I definitely wouldn't bench either of these two players right now. I know Trossard uh, has officially signed now, I think, for Arsenal. Um, so he might start taking minutes off certain players in that team but as a Martinelli owner I'm not really massively concerned this week so I thought I'd quickly talk about Danny Ings because he has now signed for West Ham from Aston Villa I was a little bit surprised at his price I guess I've not really checked it this season because he hasn't been a major option but he's only 6.4 million so I guess if you needed a cheap forward you could maybe look at him I assume his minutes while Skamaka is injured will be pretty good but obviously when he comes back there might be a bit of rotation Antonio's there as well but there is talk about him possibly leaving in the January transfer window and he's not going to play every game anyway so for the short term his minutes could be good in terms of uh, Danny Ings that is but the fixtures aren't great right Everton at home is all right but then it's Newcastle away Chelsea at home Spurs away maybe it doesn't matter because he's only 6.4 million but I certainly don't think there's a rush to go out and buy him so his minutes like I said will probably be good when Skamaka is back fit who knows he might also be penalty taker as well i guess ben rama is there he he's pretty good at penalties but a lot of those players in the west ham team have not been great so maybe danny Ings will get them maybe that'll be another kind of string to his bow at 6.4 million but yeah just quickly talk about him uh, i don't think he's really one to worry about just yet there's other stuff to kind of think about instead 
Okay, so this is the first time I'm saying this name on video. So hopefully I get it correct. If not, let me know in the comments below. So is Mudrick a good option after the Liverpool game? Chelsea fixtures look good going forward. And for 7 million, he might be a steal, especially with James and Chilwell back training. So we don't yet know when James and Chilwell will be back into the start and 11. But I do agree once they are, that is a different Chelsea team. They might not have been great recently. But having both of those players, especially Reese James, does make a huge difference. So I would look at Chelsea in a different light maybe in a few weeks time uh, we can have a quick look at the fixtures right because they are pretty decent um, so after Liverpool they've got Fulham at home West Ham away is okay Southampton at home Spurs away is not great but then it's Leeds at home Leicester Everton so kind of all the way from I mean even the Liverpool fixtures to some extent because of their defending recently but definitely from game week 22 onwards the fixtures are good and I agree for 7 million he could be decent the problem is just the sheer amount of options that Chelsea have and where they're going to fit them all in. And I can't even talk about a specific formation because they tend to change that a little bit um, under Graham Potter. But like Sterling, for example, yes, he's injured. But when he's back, he can also play on the left, just like Mudrick. Uh, you've got Zhao Felix as well. So if Havertz is going to continue up front and they're not playing with a kind of out and out front two and Jao Felix is playing off him and he's playing off him on the left hand side are they also going to have Mudrick in the side as well what if they go back to some games where they have the wing back formation especially when Chilwell is back will they need him there to be providing width and look I've not really seen this guy much I didn't know a huge amount about him until Arsenal were obviously starting to try and bring him in he seems very quick very direct and maybe that is what Chelsea need right now but I, I just I don't know, it's always the minutes thing. I can't sit here and tell you he's going to get good minutes. And it, it comes back to that point that he might be okay value for 7 million. He could be really good. But he's also taken up a uh, midfield spot that could be used for someone else. And I guess when I look at most people's teams, they're on a 3-4-3. Three, three. You've got to drop one of those midfielders to get Mudrick in. Like, he could be a big differential. I just don't know if there's much use in worrying about him right now don't get me wrong he might start against Liverpool and look so good that I wouldn't say undroppable but it, like Potter would find it hard to drop him the next game and maybe then you're looking at him so I just think this week is too early to really think about it let's see how he does uh, against Liverpool if he gets any minutes there's cup games and stuff like that for other teams etc so there's lots to take into account I would look at Chelsea in a different light once Chilwell and James are back fit that will make a big difference but they've also got a lot of attackers that could play in these positions Okay, so now game week 20 is officially finished. I just thought I'd quickly go through my team. So in the end, I finished on 82 points with an eight-point hit. It was a green arrow into just inside the top 500k, but it wasn't massive or anything like that. It wasn't really a particularly good week. So Ake and Edison just got two points between them, even though they started twice. Like I've already said, Edison should have had an assist last night. It is what it is, just another three points lost. Fernandez uh, finished on 19, Rashford 12, Luke Shaw 4 as well. And Haaland did finally get a goal I think in the end it is a triple captain fail eight points is not really enough I think whether you use it on Haaland in game week 23 maybe Rashford in 22 or you just save it for someone else Salah or Kane or someone like that you'll find it hard to get less than eight points so I've got to put it down as a fail obviously the way it happened the fact that he went through that first half had a couple of chances and look I did tweet out if that was Haaland in game week four he would have come away with a brace in the first half but right now it's just not quite going for him but given that he got the goal in the second half it was almost like relief so obviously I didn't go into it one in eight points I wanted much more than that but in the end coming out with eight points actually felt kind of okay because of the way it happened for what it's worth I'm completely used to this uh, eight points now goes down as my third highest score with the triple captain chip I got 10 last year with Salah one year I got Aguero nine every other year it's just been lower than eight so it's never been a good chip for me it's not the end of the world but I'm pretty sure that everyone else that has got it is going to outscore uh, eight points, right? So in the end, not a great week, but at least it was a green arrow. So I guess I can't complain too much. Fernandez definitely helped. The hit in the end, the eight point hit, I kind of was up, but I also benched Ben White when I could have just played him instead of bringing in Ake um, or Shaw. So all around, just not a fantastic week. And then like I said on the team selection video the other day, not really planning on making any trances. I am kind of conscious that because a lot of people, and obviously Ben Crennan has mentioned this as well, are talking about how good rolling a transfer is. Am I now not 
thinking of any other options because I've got that in the back of my mind. But I just don't see where I would make a transfer still. Uh, I don't think Fernandes is necessarily as good as some forward options this week, but there's no point in taking a hit. Same with Salah, and I, I can't transfer into De Bruyne even if I wanted to. Uh, and Mitrovic to Tony is just not a move I want to make. So I've got to hope that Ake plays against Wolves because that is a good fixture. If he doesn't, then I've got Luke Shaw coming on. After that, my bench is pretty thin. But I look at Edison, Trippier, White, all the Man, all the Man United players, Fernandez, Rashford, obviously Saka, Martinelli, Salah, Mitrovic and Haaland. They're all pretty much nailed on. Um, captaincy is going to be Haaland against Wolves. I do have slight concerns because the turnaround is Thursday night to Sunday afternoon. That is pretty quick. They only get Friday and Saturday off. Um, but I think he will probably uh, start that game. And it might go back to similar to early on in the season when he just stays on until the game is won and then he gets subbed off. I guess it's easier to stick with him even with that quick turnaround because none of my other players really have standout fixtures. If I was going to go for someone else, you know who it would be. It would be Mo Salah. Um, but I'm just going to stick on Harden and Salah will be my vice captain instead. So that's the team. That's some of my final thoughts. Like I said at the start of the video, if you want to check out the email newsletter or if you want to um, kind of apply for the kind of editing stuff as well links in the description below otherwise i'll leave it there like if you enjoyed it i forgot what i was going to say then hit subscribe if you haven't already and i'll catch you again tomorrow for the deadline stream